Welcome to the second video within my class guide series over the Revenant. This one is over how to level a Revenant. The setup that I'm actually starting with is what you would kind of see when you are first logging into your brand new Revenant, and that is you start with the mace, but you only have the mace skill 1 unlocked, and you start with legendary dwarf stance, but you only have soothing stones unlocked. Now, this was an odd choice in my opinion by the devs because the fact soothing stone, well, dwarf goes with hammer generally speaking, but the mace is a slightly higher DPS choice and does apply torment, which means as you are running away from foes they're taking gradually more damage, and the soothing stone is your highest healing heal spell out of all of the heal spells that you would have access to, including Vintari. Because of the fact that Ntari uses a tablet and has a little bit of a skill cap used with it in order to get that tablet to actually heal you for a higher amount. So this is not what you want to unlock as you level. You don't want to keep going with Legendary Dwarf Stance because of the fact it cannot be used underwater. If you look at the skill next to the skill name up at the top, you'll see a little tiny water symbol with an X through it. That means it cannot be used underwater. Basically, there are only two legends that you can use underwater, and that is Shiro here. As you can see, there's no water there. This says it can't be. And Malix, which I will swap to after this is off of cooldown. Here, as you can see again, there's no little water symbol saying that it can't be used underwater. And what is important about this is also the way that you want to level the tomb and how you want to unlock everything as you level your tomb. So, you start off with a little bit of the Legendary Dwarf skills unlocked, and that's about it. But once you hit level 11, where do you want to go from here? You don't want to keep going into Legendary Dwarf. Instead, you want to unlock Assassin, especially if you are going the route of a power build, and Legendary Demon, especially this one first, if you are going for a condition build. Demon is your condition damage dealer. Your heal skill heals you more for each condition on you. You have more conditions that you can deal to people, including confusion and torment through unyielding anguish and banish enchantment. And you also have resistance through pain absorption. Now, when you unlock your specializations after you say, start unlocking these first, you at least want your heal skill on Demon or Assassin first, depending on the route that you go. Again, Power, Goshiro. Condition, go Demon. Now, if you're going Condition, the first specialization you want to start unlocking is going to be Corruption. Corruption directly affects your damage that you deal through conditions. Also, the very first tier that you get after you get down to the third level of the first tier, you get Venom Enhancement, which is your only way to get Poison as a Revenant. And if you're PvEing to level, you want that Poison. However, if you're going a Power Build first, start unlocking Devastation, and unlock the entirety of Devastation. After you get Devastation or Corruption unlocked, do the counterpart of it. So if you want Corruption, get Devastation. If you want Devastation, go Corruption. And after you reach level 70 and can unlock the third specialization, go Invocation. You do not want to worry about Salvation or Retribution until the very end. It also directly ties in which one you're unlocking here first. As I said, Power, go Assassin. Go Demon if you're going Condi. The next one that you want to unlock with these guys here for your stances is Legendary Dwarf. Yes, I said don't go first, Legendary Dwarf, but you do want it before you want to unlock Centaur. Centaur is your heal spec. It has a level that you need to learn first before trying to play it. So go Dwarf, and also Dwarf has access to Inspiring Re Reinforcement, which is a combo field, a lightning combo field, which means you can gain swiftness through certain skills. However, let's first go over the way that you want to spec as you're going. Let's assume that you went for a power build first. You're going to first gain access to this, which also means that the weapon that you want to be using in a power build 
it is going to be a sword and not a mace. So we're assuming you're going power here. So devastation first. You luckily, as a devastation, unlock furious strikes very quickly on. So that's good. But the moment that you actually get vicious lacerations unlocked, you want to go with that. You don't really want the next one down because it's not as good as vicious lacerations or furious strikes. Furious strikes is used when you're doing a condition build, whereas vi various vicious lacerations, sorry about the mispronunciation there for a second, is what you want to use when you're going a power build. The next one that you want to get is Assassin's Presence. However, if you do not have Assassin's Presence, use Jade Echo when you get that unlocked, then head down to Nefarious Momentum once you get that unlocked. But only use this if you have are, it, are planning on running your Legendary Assassin's Dance, because otherwise you're going to end up not being able to get the effect of the two might. And finally, once you get Assassin's Presence unlocked, go Assassin's Presence. The last one that you want to get on this line here is Swift Termination. And this is assuming power build. If you're using Corruption first, which is down here, you will again go down this line here. However, the one that you want to stick with once you get it unlocked is Venom Enhancement. And again, go down here and then stick with Abyssal Chill once you get that unlocked. And then you will luckily also get Diabolical Inferno very quickly. If you guys don't want to continue activating these after you get the top tier ones here, you can move on to your Salvation, not Salvation, your Invocation and Unlocking Invocation. The reason you want to do this is if you're not purposefully going for hero points early on and you're not running to the hero point challenges as you level up and purposefully gathering those you're going to be running pretty low by the time you get corruption up to diabolical inferno or devastation up to swift termination by the time you're trying to unlock the next one so definitely don't unlock these until the very end so that way you can start on corruption or devastation as soon as possible or invocation once you hit level 70. Now with Invocation at level 70, you will slowly unlock down to here. You want either Cruel, you want either the first one or the third one. Then you want to take the first tier of each. So just keep unlocking until you get the first tier and then you can stop unlocking that. Between unlocking these, you def definitely first want to unlock either Demon, if you're going again Condi, or Shiro if you're going Power. Now you also want Shiro and Demon unlocked first because as you're running in the open world, notice how slow I run. We have access to nothing that gives us speed buffs outside of this skill here, which is Unyielding Anguish, which will allow us to leap. And you move a little bit faster and you can hit two very quickly in a row. And then you can swap to Shiro and you have Impossible Odds, which will Get, grant you quickness and allow you to run a little bit faster. This allows you to traverse the open world at higher speeds than you normally would because we run very slowly otherwise. Now, when you are running impossible odds, keep in mind your energy level outside of combat is going to be locked at 50%. And impossible odds takes down all of your energy here, which is how fast you regain your energy, and then all of this here, which is how fast you degen your energy. So you're going to be running out of energy fairly quickly, and if you're in combat with impossible odds, keep in mind your skills also take energy. That's why as your energy goes down, you see these become no longer viable to use. Because as in my overview video stated, next to between your uh, cooldown and your activation time, there's this little tiny jar symbol that says 5, and that means you use 5 energy when you use that skill, or you use 15 when you use this skill. So always keep in mind when you're running a skill that does the down tick that you won't ha you'll have less time with that down tick if you're using a skill because of the energy consumption level. Also, when you swap legends, you automatically go back to 50% and have your regen at the same time. Every single legend has a skill that has negative energy costs. Within Malix, it's going to be your embrace the darkness. But this is also really good no matter if you're condition or Condi while you're leveling, once you get it unlocked, because it upticks your your power and everything by 
every single stat here by 100. So it is very nice to have just that there in order to get that. It will also increase your survivability. The next thing that you need to know is if you're doing a Condi spec, you want to be running, running Mace. Within both specs, however, your offhand is going to be Axe. So you want Mace Axe for Condi and Sword Axe for uh, power. The reason being is Sword Sword, which is associated with Shiro, has these two skills here, which I just learned because I've never actually equipped a secondary sword on this dude. And this one here is a block skill, but the foe actually has to hit you for it to take effect. And this one here, you can easily fall off of a cliff if you use it. So basically you leap backwards if you strike a target, and if you're standing next to a cliff, you will fall off of it. You might take the enemy with you, but you will still fall off of it. Gearing, you want, if you're going Condi, make sure you have the highest Condi that you can get with a little bit of power on it. You always want Condi power. I'm in Vipers currently because I'm fully leveled, but Condi power is the way to go as a Revenant for condition. For non-condition, you want Zerkers, or as close to it as you can get. You want power, precision, and ferocity or just power and precision as you're leveling, or power and ferocity. Always make sure you have that power, though, because you want that power for your raw damage. Next, with the leveling, is, as I said, you want to go for Dwarf, and this is because the other two weapons that you're going to be always having on you. It doesn't matter what level these weapons are at, but you want to have a hammer, at least on you at all times, so you have a little bit of range capability. You can either have this equipped as your secondary weapon, or you can have your staff as a secondary weapon. While you're leveling, the only reason to run a staff is for this skill here, Search of the Mists. And again, it's because of how slow we run, we want that as a gap closer. Because it'll allow us to go a little bit further. But the second you use that gap closer, unless you really need the condition, which is uh, Condi Cleanse, which is Renewing Mists, or you want the survivability with the little bit of heal that you get from your auto attack, swap back to your mate, to your hammer. And if you're running, say, Maze Axe, and then you finally get your dwarf unlocked, another thing that you can do to increase your speed is you, you will have access eventually to Inspiring Reinforcement, which is, as I said, a light field. And if you're running a mace, you put down that light field, hit mace 3, you gain area swiftness, and you have access to a little bit of swiftness. Now, if you are running hammer as well as your offhand, and you put down inspiring reinforcement, you can use your skill 5 and your skill 3 in order to gain area swiftness. And it'll stack a little bit longer because you stacked it twice, and you had two skills that did that. And that is how you are able to run a little bit faster on this. Now, if you are running a Condi build as well, the uh, condition build that you would run here, just with the fierce strikes instead, means that you will have, sorry, the furious strikes instead, means that you will also be able to use this elite a little bit more often in Right of the Dwarf in order to activate your Diabolical Inferno. Now, with a power build, you want this, and then... As an example, incoming conditions will provide healing. Take that. And you can take that. However, if you don't want corruption unlocked and you know you're going to be leveling up just pure power and you never want to run the condition build, Run Salvation. Unlock your Salvation next. The reason for this is the little bit of healing that you will get from Salvation. Now, Salvation, keep in mind, it mainly runs off of Ventari, so you, you have to take the ones that don't, t say, Tablet. So as an example, while your health, take Blinding Truths to get that blindness when you use your heal skill. You want the dodge roll to remove conditions, or this when you're wielding the staff, but you will have to be wielding the staff, so definitely take this. And then... Mm. 
the last one just because of the fact that there is nothing that you can do with corruption that just increases your power. You can do, as an example, this spec here as well, just with a power build, or even this here with a power build, just to get that little bit of condition down. But you don't want poison, and you this way you get healing, and this way you get a little bit or a little bit of resistance to conditions. So you can do either or. This one's a little bit more damage dealing. So again, Devastation, Corruption, Invocation as an order unlock for power. Or Corruption, Devastation, Invocation. And again, the build that you want to run for Condi is this. So just take a quick look. And you can run Malik's Dwarf for Condi or Malik's Shiro for Condi. The only reason to run Dwarf is to get the right of the Dwarf and then you would swap all the way back to this, because the point is to keep using your elite skill when you're running Condi. Whereas with when you're not running Condi, running Shiro, you can run both of these here, and that way you have access to two speed buffs still, and you can still get from point A to point B fairly quickly. The point of unlocking Shiro and Malix first is so that you're not locked underwater. And I hope that that helped you guys understand how to level a Revenant. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video overview of the Revenant class.